Welcome class. Today we're looking at lesson one, two, writing expressions. Our learning targets for today are to use patterns to write those expressions. So we're going to look at patterns of numbers, patterns of shapes, and write down algebraically what's happening. We're going to also use tables, graphs, and expressions to model situations. And remember from our last lessons, real world situations are the key component to what we're trying to teach and learn this year. Let's look at this first example. Mising and his family also visited Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. As Mising investigated the artifacts on display from the ancestral Pueblo people who once called the area home, Mising began to notice that the patterns used to decorate pottery and baskets and textiles were geometrics. Mising found a pattern similar to the ones below particularly interesting. So let's look at this pattern. We can see that it starts with four corners, and then a layer of three, two, and three for a total of 12 boxes. The second pattern, four corners, four, two, two, four, for a total of 16. In the third pattern, we see, again, the four corners, and now we have five, two, 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 and five, for a total of 20. So the first question wants us to reason abstractly and draw the next two figures in the pattern. Well, we went from 12 to 16, and each time we extended the top layer and the bottom layer by one box. But see, it was three, and now it's four apart. And then we went to the five apart on the top and bottom layer. So we'll just continue to do that, and we would get shapes that look like this. The next one would have six here and six here. And we also added another box in the middle on both sides. And then we'd go to seven and seven, adding another box in the middle, extending it vertically. Number two, create a table showing the relationship between the figure number and the number of small squares in each figure. Well, we're just going to take our numbers that we counted of the boxes and put them into a table for each figure. Figure one, we counted 12 boxes. Figure two, we counted 16. Figure three, we counted 20. Here would be figure four, which is 24 boxes. And here is figure five, which would be 28 boxes. We put this into a table. It looks like this. And we kind of can tell that every figure we go up, the number of squares is increasing. And let's see how by 12 to 16, that's a difference of 4. 16 to 20, 4. 20 to 24, 4. We're adding 4 boxes every time. So if we go past 5 and 28, it would be 6 and 32, and then 7 and 36. And we got all those numbers from the three shapes that we had originally and two more that we added on. And we can predict what's going to happen as we create more and more shapes. This is recognizing patterns and putting it in tables, which is exactly what our learning targets were. Number three, use the variable n to represent the figure number. Write an expression that could be used to determine the number of small squares in any figure number. So let's look at this one. Using an expression that basically means 
write down what's happening using numbers and the variable. So we know we started with 12. That was our first number. Everything added on to 12. And then every time we went to a new figure, we added four more times the number of the figure that we were on minus one. For example, the first figure was 12 plus four times the number of figure on one minus one is zero, so 12 plus zero, 12. That's how you get the first one. The second figure would be 12 plus four times two minus one, which is one. So 12 plus four times one, 16. The third one would have been 12 plus 4 times 3 minus 1, which is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 12 plus 8, 20. 3 and 20. And that matches with the chart that we made previously. So that is where we get this e expression that can represent any s figure in the series. Number four, use your expression to determine the number of small squares in the twelfth figure. Well, we'll take that. Remember, we start with 12, plus adding four boxes every time for the next figure. This is the twelfth figure, so that's 12 minus 1. That's going to equal to 12 plus 4 times 12 minus 1, 11. So that's 12 plus 44 equals 56. There should be 56 in boxes if we continue drawing 12 of those shapes getting larger every time. I'd like you to try number 5 through 16 using the figures that you start with in number 5. The only difference is they want you to count the squares in the middle as an alternate color. For example, that one had one. This one would have four. One, two, three, four. This one would have nine. And so on with this next couple of shapes. They'll ask you to draw two more figures and be sure to kind of designate the inside squares if you have a different color or at least shade them in if you leave the other ones blank so that you have outside and inside boxes that you can tell apart. So 5 through 16. You can pause the video and once you're done we'll come back to number 17. Number 17. We're going to see that Mising discovered another pattern in the artifacts and noticed that when the triangles were used, the triangles were all equilateral and often multicolored. Equilateral means all of the sides were the same length of all the triangles. All triangle sides are the same length for the word equilateral. So number 17, determine the perimeter of each figure if each side of the triangle measures one centimeter. Well, one, two, three. The first figure would be three centimeters. Figure number two. One, two, three, four, five centimeters. And then figure number three, we'd have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven centimeters. And I'm just putting F3 for figure three, F2, figure two, figure one. I should put it right there. But. Then Mising kind of found that he could determine the pattern or perimeter of any figure using the pattern expression 2n plus 1. Using Mising expressions calculated for the next three figures in the pattern. So we have 1, 2, 3, we're going to do 4, 5, and 6, and put this in our table. So let's see. Figure 1, we said was 3 centimeters. Figure 2, we said was 5. Figure 3 was 7. And you can already kind of tell how much it's increasing every time. Figure 4 would be 9. Figure 5 would be 11. Figure 6 would be 13. And we could tell just by looking at our first shapes that it was going up two every time. And we can make a little table out of that. And if you've made one more, because I accidentally blanked out the first one, it would have been seven and fifteen. that you'll put those numbers in this chart here. Creating a sequence to represent the perimeters of the figures in the number. Remember the sequence we said were just a list of numbers. So we would say 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and it would just keep going like that. So is there a common difference? Okay, is there something that's happening to each one of them the same? Yes, it is increasing by two Or we could say the common difference is two That's the amount that's different between each one in the sequence Number 20, represent this relationship between the patterns and their parameters as a graph. Be sure to label your axis and scale on the y-axis. So what that just basically means we're going to have to put in our numbers here as we work them out. We're going to want our axis to go up to 15 at least for our chart. So let's count by, let's say, threes. So, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Oops, hard to make with a mouse sometimes. Twenty one, and then twenty two. Let me erase that and try that one again. Twenty-four meant not twenty-two. And twenty-seven at the very top. You'll have an easier time if you're using pencil and paper. So we'll put our dots at one three. That was on our table. Two, five, so that would be between three and six, about here. Three, seven, between six and nine, about here. Four, nine, here. Five, eleven, almost twelve, right there. Six, thirteen, just above 12 and 7 15 right there 
and we can see that it's a linear relationship because it's making a line if we connected the dots. I'd like you to do the rest of this lesson 21 through 29 on your own time.